Light is the most important form of energy for marine life. Without light, vegetation, such as seagrasses, would not grow. Seagrasses are home to many of the ocean's smaller and juvenile animals. Without seagrasses, the marine ecosystems that provide food to hundreds of millions of people around the world will be, at the very least, greatly diminished. Unfortunately, excess pollution from land runoff, as well as the atmosphere, is choking off their light supply. Even from an airplane, it is apparent how much pollution is in the Chesapeake Bay. Runoff of nutrients from farms and municipal sources and suburban lawns pours into Chesapeake Bay every day. These excess nutrients contribute to algal blooms that grow and block the light, then they uh, decay sink to the bottom and consume oxygen that other organisms need to survive the clouding of the water. Restricts the amount of light that gets to the bottom and there's less available then for submerged aquatic vegetation. And many of these have, have died over the years and only slowly begun to come back. Chuck Gallegos and his team at the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center are trying to find out what is causing seagrasses to lose their supply of light. The seagrasses are an indicator of water quality. They need a lot of light, and so when they disappear, it's a sign that water quality has deteriorated and that there's less light available at the bottom than there used to be. So back in the 1960s, scientists first noticed the seagrass beds declining in the Chesapeake Bay. Before that, the bay grasses were so prevalent that they were growing down to two meters deep and boaters were actually complaining that they were fouling the props. These days, the bay grasses only grow to about a meter or a half a meter in depth and they can't go much shallower than that because if they, the beds dry out, they'll die. In the Chesapeake, the main problem for seagrass growth is that small particles in the water scatter and absorb light, preventing the light from reaching the seagrasses. These particles include clay, decaying organic matter, and microscopic floating algae called phytoplankton. The phytoplankton population has increased because of nutrients from sources such as farms and homes entering the bay. Well, the primary factor that has increased due to human activity is the phytoplankton. They've been fertilized by excess nitrogen and phosphorus. This increased phytoplankton population actually hurts the life below the water's surface. If light cannot get to the seagrasses, then the fish that live within the leaves will lose their habitat. Animals that eat the grasses will starve. Without seagrass, the entire food chain is affected. Uh, you get out any map you want and look at the shoreline 30 years ago and look at it now. I mean, the Chesapeake Bay is the dumping ground for so many places. You know, the runoff, and this is where it all comes. So, how much can the bay take, seriously? How much can it take? How much more pollution the Chesapeake Bay can take before food production stops requires understanding how much light is being scattered and absorbed in the water. There are two ways the CERC team measures how far light gets into the water. The first is a Secchi disk, a simple and effective tool that oceanographers have used to measure water clarity since the 1860s. This is a Secchi disk. We use it to measure light penetration in the water. And as soon as we can't see the top of this white disk anymore, that's the depth of the water that we're interested in. It looks like it was shallower that time. It was about 0.6 meters. The more modern method to measure how far light reaches below the surface of the water is to use a light meter. This instrument measures how much light the water actually absorbs as it gets deeper. And we lower this into the water and measure how much light the water absorbs at various depths. And at each depth, we get a reading from the light logger. 1649. Go down another half meter. 
The data from the Secchi disk and the light meter reveal a direct relationship between a lack of light and the health and abundance of seagrass. But in order to know what's specifically blocking the light in the bay, the CERC team has to find out what's in the water, whether it's mostly organic matter, like phytoplankton, or whether it's mostly inorganic particles, like clay. One causes more problems than the other. The organic matter is worse because it takes up oxygen, making it harder for the seagrasses to grow. It also blocks more light. It seems that the organic matter is more detrimental to the grasses than the inorganic. It scatters and absorbs more light. Back in the lab, the first important step is filtering the matter from the water. We filter the water to catch all the particles on the filters. If we measured that dried, it would just be a measure of total solids, the total particles that are suspended in the water. However, we want to distinguish between what is organic and inorganic. So we put them in an oven at 500 degrees Celsius to burn off the organic portion of the particles. And by measuring the differences between the weights of a total solids filter and a burned off filter, we can distinguish what is organic and what is not organic. The data right now say it's about 40% organic. That's about twice as high as it should be. Ideally, it should be around 15 or 25% because the inorganic material isn't as harmful to the seagrass. Presently, we see seagrasses growing not much more than a meter deep and historically they grew two meters or deeper. And the goal of the Chesapeake Bay program is to restore that to two meters. Reducing the amount of nutrient runoff that is released into the bay will protect the seagrass that's still there. I enjoy the bay, I'd like to see it cleaner. I truly would, but a lot's gotta change. But a lot's gotta be done. I think. You know, Mother Nature would recover the bay very quickly if it had a chance. If less organic matter from pollution is kept from entering the bay, there will be more light for seagrass, more habitat for fish, and more food for us.